Good afternoon. Hi, how are you? Yeah. Hi there. So this is where it all happens, folks. Well, where we're collecting it all together and putting it in the kilns. I see here are the kilns, and the actual kiln will move on tracks over the wear, so there's less breakages. Yes. So the kiln moves rather. What would be your percentage of breakages? It's about 3%. So what I'd imagine. Yeah. Percentage breakages 3%. So they're very, very careful here. The kiln moves rather than the uh, items. I'm delighted to be able to uh, video in here. I, I was expecting, I wasn't expecting to be able to video, to be quite honest. Less ground. And this is Leah leading us. Once the design has been approved, a model would then be made. A model this size can take up to two weeks to hand carve, and other models, like the figurines, can take up to two months. From the model, they will then make a master mold, but they do not destroy the master mold, and they have some date back to the 1800s. From the master mold, they will then make a case mold. And from the case mold, they will then make a working mold. So that's what they do here in this department. And all the working molds are made of plaster bars. But we'll see them being used in the next department. into this here and this is the casting department so this here is the working mold which will be made in the previous department and this mold will be used once a day five days a week for an eight week period after the eight weeks, the pattern that's on the inside of the mould will begin to fade, so there's no longer any use to us. This here is the clay, and it's known as slip, and it's piped through the yellow piping along the ceiling to each past person's desk. And it's made from china clay from Cornwall, that's far from Norway, hot ash and water. So each craftsperson will fill their moulds. The length of time that they leave the slip in the mould will determine how thick the piece will be. And if you see these clatter mugs here, this is the whiteware stage, so you can see the colour difference. And this is Patrick working away here. There's a waste stage along the top, and that has to be cut off when it's nice and soft. Patrick working away there, and Patrick is in his 50s and he joined the, the company 
when I was 16 and, and as a young apprentice and there's a gentleman over there who's been working here for 40, 40 odd years, or I think it's 48 years. 48. Yeah. Oh wow. So the clay that they use in this department is the same clay used in the previous department, only they add an extra ingredient called gum arabic. And the gum arabic makes the clay more pliable and gives it the grey colour. Your clay will then be extruded through the dot box, which is that red machine there behind you. And it will come out in spaghetti like strands. And using two, three, four of these strands on a ceramic tile. This is all hand done. Well, each petal <laughs> individually done. And all these wee crisscrosses individually done. And here's the tools of the trade. Oh, my goodness. Never complete a basket in a day. It's done in stages throughout the week, and that's to give it drying time in between each stage. <coughs> but you'll always make your basket from start to finish. So yeah, we have a standard for every piece. So. Yeah, yeah, we just have to look at this. Aye, uh-huh, copy it. Really, really. I don't know. Absolute magic. Yeah. And here's another magician at work. <laughs> what's, what's your first name? John. John, and John has been here for 41 years. My goodness. And they could do this in a sleep. Into the glaze. And the glaze is made from borax and frit. Borax is a natural mineral and frit is a finely ground glass. So each piece will be hand dipped and then the bottom of that piece will then be wiped and that stops it from sticking in the kiln. The last process in, the, in this is that the pottery goes into the, the kiln for 24 hours at 1000 degrees centigrade. That's totally amazing. The pottery now goes for quality control and it's, um, it's scanned for any kind of imperfection. And if it passes that test, or if it fails that test, it is smashed. And if it passes that test, it, it now goes for uh, painting in each of these types of colors. This is where the painting all takes place. marks that go on the bleak pottery or have gone on the bleak pottery. Absolutely fascinating. And you see the car there, she, she's she's writing. Oh, you make a mistake. It's a banjax. There's a Approximately 50 uh, full-time employed in the uh, factory here, and that doesn't count all the um, reception staff and the uh, staff of the restaurant, cafe, or anything else. It's absolutely fantastic. So there's a lot uh, hanging on this uh, on this uh, bully pottery. A lot hanging on. A lot of livelihoods. Once your piece has been painted, but each individual uh, 
piece of pottery is stamped with. We've got the Irish grave flag, we've got the Devonish round tower, and we've got the harp. And I think the uh, individual potteries initi uh, potterers' initials are placed on this as well, so the potter piece of pottery can be traced back. And this this uh, changes um, this logo changes every eight years, so. Uh, to help trace back uh, pottery, but uh, the um, the individual will find and and, and uh, harp and round tower remain remain there. So that's the end of our tour, folks. <laughs> as I always say, as I always say, come and see it for yourself. It only cost a favour uh, to get in, and I got in free because I had a, a, a wee uh, wee ticket. Thank you very much, Leah. Very well done. Leah, wonderful.